We've made the claim that equivalence relations are really the same as set partitionings in the sense that every partitioning of a set induces an equivalence relation and every re equivalence relation induces a set partitioning. Let's take a few minutes to justify that claim now. Before we do it, it'd be helpful to remind ourselves of what we mean by an equivalence relation. An equivalence relation on a set is a binary relation that satisfies three properties the reflexive, the symmetric, and the transitive properties. The reflexive property says that for every x in the set, x is related to itself. The symmetric property says that if x is related to y, then y is related to x. And the transitive property says that if x is related to y and y is related to z, then x is related to z. And it's these properties together that make a binary relation an equivalence relation. Let's look at an example of that. Let's take the equality relation on the set of rational numbers. It's certainly true that every rational number is equal to itself. And if x is equal to y, then y must be equal to x. And finally, if x is equal to y and y is equal to z, then x must be equal to z. That shows that equality on the rational numbers is an equivalence relation. Now that seems very simple to us at first and in some ways it is but you have to realize that we actually use these properties when we do things like reduce fractions. The equivalence class of the fraction one-half includes the numbers one-half, two-fourths, three-sixths, minus seven over minus fourteen, etc. Now we actually use these equivalence properties when we reduce, say, minus 7 divided by minus 14 to the form 1 half. If we start with minus 7 over minus 14, we might first cancel out the negative between the numerator and the denominator, arriving at the form 7 fourteenths. Then we could divide the 7 out of the numerator and the denominator to come up with a form 1 half. When we do that, we're actually making a claim about classes that have infinitely many objects in them. We're saying that the equivalence class of minus 7 over minus 14 is the same as the equivalence class of 7 fourteenths, which is the same as the equivalence class of 1 half. In other words, these numbers, minus 7 over minus 14, 7 divided by 14, and 1 divided by 2 are all representatives of one single set. That's what the properties of equality over the rational numbers are allowing us to do. Well, that's an equivalence relation. What about a set partitioning? A set partitioning of a set S is a decomposition of the large set S into smaller, typically smaller, subsets that satisfy two properties. First, it must be the case that everything that is in the original set S must be in one of the subsets of the partition. Oftentimes, we state this property by saying that the subsets cover the set S. Secondly, it is not the case that any element in the original set S is in two distinct subsets of the partition. Uh, to make that precise, if K and J are different, then SK and SJ must have an empty intersection. Another way of saying that would be to say this, either, either SK equals SJ or SK intersect SJ is empty. Two subsets are either the same or they are completely disjoint. Let's take a couple of examples of set partitionings. For instance, if we took the set of integers, we can partition them between the evens and the odds. Now it's certainly true that if we take the evens and the odds together, we get the set of all of the integers. On the other hand, there is no integer that is both even and odd. So in this case, we have just S1 and S2. And if you pick two of these subsets, you either pick the same one twice, or you pick two that have a completely empty intersection. We could do the same thing by division by three, for instance. We could say that S0 is all of those integers that give a remainder of zero on division by three. S1, 
all of those integers that give a remainder of 1 on division by 3, and S2 is all the integers that have a remainder of 2 on division by 3. We represent those in these kind of ways. If I put a, take a 0 and put square brackets around it, it means the equivalence class that contains the number 0. The equivalence class that contains the number 1 would be this one, and the equivalence class that contains the number 2 would be this one. Notice that this way of naming is certainly not unique. The equivalence class of 0, the equivalence class of 3, and the equivalence class of minus 12 are all the same. They're this set S0 right here. But once again, notice we have this property. If you pick a couple of these subsets, you have either picked the same set twice, or you've picked two subsets, say S0 and S2, that are completely disjoint. They have no elements in common, whatever. Now, it's worth noticing, and we've seen it in these two examples right here, that if we pick a set of values, there certainly isn't a unique way to divide them into um, subsets. Uh, there's more than one partitioning. For instance, suppose I took the integers 1 through 12, then there's a large number of ways that I could create a partitioning of this set. The very simplest way would be to do this. I'll simply put every single integer into the same subset. And this does create an equivalence relation. The equivalence relation would be this. Every single integer in this set is equivalent to every other. And it's easy to see that that relation is an equivalence relation. Um, everything is equivalent to everything else, and therefore 2 is related to itself, 7 is related to itself, etc. for everything in here. That would be the reflexive property. The symmetric, if A is related to B, then B is related to A. Well, that's certainly true because everything is related to everything. And then finally, the transitive property, if A is related to B and B to C, then A to C. Well, once again, that's true because everything is related to everything else. Now, the calculations, the reasoning, gets a little bit more complex if I subdivide this in any way. Let's suppose I say that these on the first row are subset 1, and everything down below here, I'll call that subset 2. Now I have a partitioning of my set. And I also have a re equivalence relation. We would say, for instance, that 1 and 4 are equivalent because they belong in the same subset, S1. And uh, 10 and 7 are equivalent because they belong to the same subset, S2. Um, and it's easy to justify that we have reflexivity. Everything is equivalent to itself. Symmetry, if A is related to B, then B is related to A. Transitivity also will hold if, say, 1 is related to 3 and 3 is related to 4, then it must be that 1 and 4 are related to each other, which is to say they're in the same subset. These kind of partitionings, as we've indicated in this diagram, certainly don't have to have subsets that are the same size. There doesn't have to be any kind of obvious pattern to the way that we're dividing it up. Uh, we could, for instance, subdivide here and call that one S3. That would be a perfectly good partitioning, but the key is this. S1, union, S2, union, S3 is the whole set, and if I take any two of these and look at their intersection, then it's either the case that intersection is empty or the two subsets are in fact equal to each other. So we have a partitioning and this induces an equivalence relation on the set 1 through 12.